Hey everyone, welcome back to the Genus Brewing Channel. Today I am going to be putting together a temperature controlled solenoid. What is that? That is something that you can hook up to any of your new conical fermenters that have the chilling systems integrated into them. So whether you have just you know a chilling line going through some kind of a refrigeration unit or you actually have a glycol chiller, you can hook one of these guys up in line to perfectly control the temperature of your fermenter. Stay tuned to find out how. So to start out with, let me talk about everything you're going to need to make one of these. First and most important, you're going to need an Inkbird controller. These guys are great temperature controllers that have been on the market for a couple, three years now and uh, we've been using them here in our store, our brewery, and they've been working great for us. Secondly, uh, you're going to need a solenoid valve. This is one I bought off of Amazon, I'm going to have a link below to it. So this is a solenoid valve that actually works off of 120 volts, so it's perfectly compatible with your Inkbird. And it has half inch national pipe thread uh, coming off of it, so it will go into most barbs, most fittings. Uh, next, you're gonna need a couple of pipe thread to barb fittings. So these guys happen to be half inch pipe thread to 3 8 inch diameter barbs. Uh, these are actually going to go on to our 5 16 inch inner diameter tubing coming off of our own glycol chiller here. These can vary depending on your own system. Uh, next, I'm going to need a ball valve. And uh, this ball valve is actually important because this is going to change the resistance of the system. And that plays important when you have multiple fermenters hooked up in the same system because you have to change that resistance, otherwise you might get a lot of cooling through one fermenter and not much cooling through another. If you only have one fermenter, you can actually forgo this step altogether. Finally, we have a nipple to link the ball valve to the solenoid. This one happens to be plastic. You can buy brass if you want, but plastic is usually a little bit cheaper and will work perfectly for this situation. Lastly, I've got our plug that will go from the wiring in our solenoid into our inkbird unit. So let's go ahead and put this together. One more thing I forgot to mention, it helps to have a couple wrenches on hand. Uh, something to you know work with whatever you get. Now I'm gonna start in on a time lapse of me throwing all this junk together. So here we go. Well, that should be the end of that time lapse. We've got her all ready to go. All I gotta do is take my little plug here and uh, plug it into my ink bird, and we'll be good. Um, so this is a pretty short uh, cord, by the way, but these are literally just your standard cables. So any kind of extension cord, if you got a little bit of electrical know-how to you, you can easily cut that, do a couple splices into it, and get a much longer cord than this coming off your solenoid. Let's go to the back. So here's the one that we've got hooked up already. Right now I'm going to tie into our glycol line. So currently right now we've got our high line coming off of here, a low line coming off of here. This, if you can see it, it's probably not in the frame, no, nope, not quite. But uh, that is the uh, chilling coil to our uh, bright tank. Hey, I got beer. So we're going to go ahead and hook up tie into these two glycol lines and hook into the fermenter that's kind of in the wee background there. Um, 
This is gonna be a complex process, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and show you when I get back. All right, I'm gonna need two more 5 16 inch stainless T's. I'm gonna need some pipe clamps. I'm gonna need some 5 16 inch tubing. I'm gonna need a flathead screwdriver, and I think that should be good. Thanks for the screwdriver. I got part of it. It's actually been a few days later. We have this hooked up now. I brewed a batch of beer that's in here. You probably hear some bubbles in the background. But we have our temperature controller hooked up. We've got it set for 68 degrees right now. I've got my solenoid in line with my ball valve here. And this is going to allow us to perfectly control the temperature of this tank. So let's go ahead and check out kind of the mess of wires and see if I can explain that just a little bit for you for what I got going on right here. So coming off of my chiller here, I've got a high side and I've got a low side. So all I've done here to try to keep things as simple as possible is I've just put in T's on my high side that go to my fermenters and then come back in on the low side. And then I've also got, um, which is important actually for this system in particular, I've got another ball valve right here. I've got th this ball valve turned to where it's just barely on and what that does is if both of these solenoids aren't running and they're both closed, it means that I still have flow through my system. Otherwise that'll cause a lot of strain on this pump and uh, also probably end up with some leaks because of the pressure it's gonna cre create. So I think that about sums it up. As you can see here, we just tried to keep our system simple. Um, but using these solenoids in line with those ink birds is a great way to get more or less a professional quality temperature controlled system without dropping thousands of dollars. Until next time on Genus Brewing, I should probably grab a beer. By the way, don't forget to give us some feedback on this video. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Otherwise, give us a thumbs down. Let us know if you have some ideas on videos you'd like uh, to see from us. I'll see you next time on Genus Brewing. Awkward beer sip. Mm.